Happy days, happy days. It's uh, it's very faint, attempting to snow. I left my garbage cans at the road. There's Billy's truck with his funky door. The new parts come in for the rocker in the cab corner. We just haven't done them yet. We've been running all over. There's Billy's plow. There's my plow. Yep. We left the garbage cans at the road, so. I get the garbage cans. But we have a bunch of stuff to do today. We're supposed to be getting a storm as normal. Oh, this garbage can stuck down the ditch. As normal, they can't decide how much snow we're getting. One probably can't hear me anyway. Yuck, that was nasty. I just rubbed a garbage can across the front of my sweatshirt, the part that was down in the ditch. That's a gnat mat. But anyway, so one forecast says three to six inches. The other one says eight to 10 inches. Today is Tuesday at, what time is it? 9.18 in the morning. It's supposed to start for us about two o'clock tomorrow afternoon and go until Thursday night or Friday morning and uh, then it'll be over. But there's a few things I need to address first. So for storm prep. So let's go do that. Okay, so. Here we are at the shop, and I need some things. Some things, you know, like stuff, stuff. So there's an issue, the last storm, when I plowed with the Toro, uh, the sidewalks at the apartment complexes, there was a small issue with, I need like a box or something. What do we got in this box? Empty box, sweet nastiness in here get out of my box all right so put this over here on the ferris there was an issue with the back left tire those ag tires i put on there so i don't know if we like kind of lobbed it who wants me um i don't know if we kind of lobbed it off a curb a little bit and it just peeled the tire away from the bead and let some air out or if we actually got something stuck in the tire so i'm gonna grab a plug kit tire seal and plugs so when i get there if that happens to be the case if that happens to be the case then i can take care of that plug the tire make sure this is on so it don't leak in my truck we'll take care of that i'm gonna bring the milwaukee battery tire pump that's gonna go with us um I need to grab a gas can because that thing's really low on gas. So I gotta go get some gas so that I can fill it up. And I need to get salt. I think I have five bags, six bags of salt there. But one thing I've never done with these sidewalks up there, cause they can be a real pain in the butt. So one thing I've never done with them is I've never pre-salted them yet. So, I know I have plenty of salt to get through, plowing them once at the end of the storm and then salting them, uh, which is all I'm required to do according to contract. I'm not required to maintain them during the storm. So what I'm gonna do is, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four. Um, five, six. We'll just fill up six five gallon buckets. That should be plenty. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna to go to Josh's and I'm gonna get some salt, fill up these buckets, and if they come apart, bag nab it. So one, two, three, 
There's four. Stay with me. Five, six. Perfect. Okay, so I'm going to fill these six buckets up with salt at Josh's. I'm going to take them over there, and then I'll have them there. And I'm going to fix that tire. I'm going to put gas in it. But my plan is tomorrow the storm's supposed to start around 2. So maybe around noon, 1 o'clock or something. Billy and I will go over there. We will pre-salt all these sidewalks. I'm going to lay it kind of heavy. Not super heavy, but lay it kind of decent. And I'm going to put the salt down before the storm starts. And I'm going to see what that does. If it doesn't get rid of all the snow, depending on how much we get, and keeps any snow from building up, it's at least going to be far less, which will make them much more easy to manage during the storm or after. Because, like I said, the contract states I'm only supposed to do them after the storm. I have four hours from the time the store ends to have the sidewalks done from the end of the storm. But if it's a bad storm, I try to maintain them as much as possible during the storm, at least the main walkways from the doors straight out to the parking lot. Maybe not the whole thing, but at least those. So if there's an emergency or anything, emergency personnel can get in, things like that, just to be safe. So, and I'm not required to do it, I just do. Uh, but they're a year round contract, power washing all the buildings at all three complexes, plowing all the complexes, mowing all the complexes, landscaping all the complex. So I like to take care of them because they take care of me. Sweet little old lady I always see in the store there. She's such a sweetheart. I, uh, she goes, what are you doing today, hon? I said, prepping for the storm. She goes, storm? What storm? And I said, I know it. Mother Nature is bipolar this year. I wish it would either just snow a lot so I have something to do or go right back in the summer, which I prefer summer. I'd much rather be, you know, in the heat mowing lawns, but yeah. Monster, mean bean, my morning elixir. You guys know, every morning, every morning. That's what I do. Monster Java, mean bean, love it. You should really think about getting one. You'll thank me later. Doing a lot of thinking today. Thinking, 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 thinking. Words are hard. Well, here we are. Josh's shop. There's a huge salt pile. There's, I don't know how many ton of salt in there. And uh, I realized I forgot my spade shovel. Huh? Helps when you have the code to get into Josh's shop. So, there's all these trailers out here. What are they? Hey, he's got one right here on this trailer. I don't even have to go in the shop. Oh yeah. There's a nice little mini spade right here. Oh, it was frozen. This will work just fine. Let's fill some salt buckets up. Get on here. You guys remember my video from years ago when I used to have a salter on the back of my truck and I used to fill 100 buckets up and then stack them in my garage because I know where to store salt? That's what this reminds me of every time I come here and get salt. But super easy. I think somebody asked me one time how much this weighs out to. And I think it's between I weighed them before. I think 45 and 50 pounds per bucket. So, kind of like having a 50 pound bag. And the only thing I salt anymore is the sidewalks at the apartments. I don't need that much, so there's really no need to do it any other way but this way. 
and I could just use bags and keep pallets of bags, but it's way cheaper doing it like this. So you get a ton of salt, a pallet of bags, and you're paying anywhere from two to four hundred dollars depending on the market. It does vary that much, but when you buy it in bulk, it's ninety dollars a ton, roughly. I've seen it around seventy-eight dollars a ton kind of back and forth again depending on the market but I don't think I've ever paid over 90 95 dollars a ton so it's way cheaper and just takes a few minutes to do this so I'll spend a few minutes doing this to save myself a few hundred bucks and that's it now I throw the lids on them put them in the truck go put them in the garage at the apartments where the Toro is we're good to go baby now I just dump them into the spreader and go. Hello. 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 I'm all done loading up salt. Are uh, Mike and his little brother coming over here before I yeah. close up this pile? Yeah, they're coming over. All right, I'll wait for them then. Now I'll Look just help that. them load up all your buckets. Okay, how windy is it up there? Uh, it's a little windy. It's not too bad. I just got part of the tarp pulled back. I left everything else on yeah. top of it so that I wouldn't go chase a tarp across your field down into the stone quarry. That's no fun. Nah, no, that'd be a cold one. Well, yeah, then I'd just get a rope and I'd hook it to the back of your new Can-Am and bring it back, you know. You know, because it's the easiest way. That one it doesn't have a key fob for it. What, the Can-Am? Yeah. Yeah, that's with me. You know, I'm just thinking about your tarp, you know. it's I don't really want to ride your can am I'm just thinking about your tarp. I want to do what's best yeah, for Golden so you Tree. Wanna, you want to ride the Can-Am. Yeah, I know. I was, gonna, I was actually going to open the shop, jump on it, and just pull it up in front of the camera and just wave to you. And you're like, you son of a... <laughs> well, but, I actually I have the key pop for it. Nice. Yeah, it's, uh, it's actually starting to snow very lightly here, but... Yeah. But, yeah, I'll... Uh, they got to get the buckets out of the shop. Yeah. Okay. Like ten of them, I think. Yeah. All right. Something well, like I will. Uh, I'll just wait for them then. I'll help them load up your buckets. Okay. Okay, if buddy. You, uh, hang, if you hang around afterwards, when I get there for my estimate, I'll let you take the can in for a ride. Yeah, I would love to, but I have to go and get this stuff done. I don't know where my boy is. I think he's. Uh, I think it, he's at his lady friend's house. So. I gotta get oh, over so the. He's worrying about hell before work. No, I guess I don't know. You know, you know what happens to them teenage boys. You know, they start thinking right. about tail and they forget about their responsibilities. Tell him I'm gonna take your truck. You know, in his defense, I uh, I told him last time, like, go ahead. He's like, you need me home in the morning. I'm like, no, you're fine. Go have fun. I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> but I don't know. If I uh, if I really don't feel like doing anything, then I'll call him. Like I need a hand. I'm like, oh, I hurt my back. Oh, you're gonna have to do this now. <laughs> I said, hey, I got a date tonight too, pal. But my date's not till seven o'clock. So, you know, you gotta work first, and then you play afterwards. Oh boy, how are you going on a date? Uh, I'm not really sure. I haven't worked it out. It's that uh, dental hygienist I was telling you about. Oh boy. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, she's way too cute for me. I'll tell you that. Uh, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna have to keep her intoxicated so she doesn't realize that uh, she's a supermodel and I'm just an old farm boy. <laughs> I know. <laughs> you gotta get rid of all these grays. The divorce lawyer asked me the other day. He's like, "Man, I haven't seen you in months. Like, where would all them grays come from?" I go, "I just signed it, dude." And he started laughing. He goes, "You're a trip." He goes, I'm going to need you to do some landscaping for me this year. I said, no problem. He goes, what are you going to charge me? I go, exactly what my ex-wife just paid you for the divorce. He started laughing. He goes, I can't deal with you today. <laughs> but, That's awesome. All right, I'm going to get my truck out of the way. I'll wait for the boys to get here. I'll give them a hand. All righty. All right, bud. I'll talk to you later. Yep. Bye. All right, that was Mr. Josh. So we got to wait for Big Mike and his little brother Connor to get here and I'm gonna help them load up some buckets with salt so they don't have to do it by themselves I mean they can handle it easily that's no problem but I figure I'm here give them a hand they would give me a hand if I needed it so 
Might as well help them out. I'm not gonna park in front of that door because I'm this willing to bet that they, they are going to put the buckets in the loader bucket of skid steer probably or the MT-85 and they're gonna move them that way would be my guess. So I won't block the door, but I'll go open the shop for them, get them buckets ready. So my guess is gonna be, I'll put the buckets in there. See, Josh has five gallon buckets. He's got a whole bunch here too. They either put them in the front of that one or in the front of that. Josh never uses that. And I always borrow that John Deere y'all see in my videos from a buddy of mine to do stuff all year. He's like, just come and take the MT-85. I never use it. So I'm gonna use that a bunch this year. Maybe I'll convince him to sell it to me. But uh, yeah, I'll probably just put it in this one. Put the buckets in there and then they can move the whole thing. And drive it over there, fill the buckets up, bring it back here, put the buckets back inside, and then it'll be good to go for them when they're ready to uh, go out salting, do one of their salt runs. I don't see them; they ain't here yet. I could just, uh, I could just go on my phone and let's see here. I could go on my phone and check Mike's location. Eight minutes ago at the trap house that's his house so eight minutes ago he hasn't left his house up oh, now it's live he hasn't left his house yet all right they'll be here soon big fancy v blade western v blade on there pulling in rolling dirty probably blaring music there he goes bye mike all right time to load some buckets that sucker's cold Oh, the smell of diesel in the morning. Oh! Big Mike gonna, oh, I just stepped in some slop. Big Mike's gonna bring this sucker out with the buckets in it over to here. And we can fill these buckets up. That way we don't have to carry, they're filling like 10 buckets, I think. That way we don't have to carry 10 buckets back over there and put them back inside the shop. Big Mike gonna drive this thing over here. dumps all them buckets off there that's gonna suck but me and Connor will be leaving and be like let us know when you got it cleaned up Mike that's a whole lot of buckets of salt there one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirty fourteen buckets oh boy pink now time to put some lids on don't stick your toes under there that'll suck Bright lights, no lights. Probably gonna have to pull all them back ones out to get them lids on. Yeah. And besides, if Josh comes here and decides he wants to fill the truck and the buckets are in there, he's gonna, you know, start throwing a temper tantrum or something. Good job, Big Mike. You're smooth in that machine. No yeah. jerking around, no nothing. No, I got pretty used to it. Pretty quick. Yeah, but they're easy to use once you get the hang of it. A lot of people are intimidated by these things, but once you get the hang of it, they're pretty simple. Yeah. You're jumping down off there like an old man, Mike. Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah. This business will do that to you. All right. Well, here we are. Apartment complexes. And this is where all the equipment goes. Lights. Oh, they're very dim. Very dark in here. So in here we have the Toro, the pull behind broadcast broadcast spreader, the push spiker, and I can't remember what tire it was. I'm pretty sure it's that tire. Yeah, it's that tire over there. You can see it's kind of low. 
So it didn't go completely flat and it's been about a week. So I'm guessing that I just peeled it on a curve and peeled it back a little bit. So otherwise that thing would probably be flat. So I'm gonna put some air in that. I gotta move these sandbags around so I can stack the buckets in here and then put fuel in it. And actually that tire over there looks pretty darn low too. So we'll check that one too. Fuel in it, check the two tires, both on that side, that's weird. And uh, move this stuff around so we can put buckets. And we'll be good to go. See one, two, three, four, five, six. There's one down there. Seven bags of salt. That's theirs. And then six buckets. So plenty. Now let's just put some gas in this thing. And then we'll check those tires. This tire looks lower than that one, but I'm pretty sure these are run flats. They are. I'm not worried about that one. But this one here, let's see what happens. You don't have to stop it, they usually stop themselves. But I went to 12 and a half because it looks like it's starting to hit the brake. It's right there. You know, because these tires aren't meant for this. But they do a great job. I think that's it. Salt in, fueled up, tire is aired it take this battery and charge it because it needs charge and then throw this back in my truck that way I'll have it if I need it if we get here tomorrow or the next day and it's low then I'll know I have a problem but either way it'll all be taken care of on the next project so I'm definitely not a big fan of going to the city I try to avoid cities at all costs I just they're not for me they're not for me. I'm a country boy, and I'm like, I like being down in my little circle of the world. I don't, I don't do cities. And uh, I need a clipboard. Every time it sells, Billy has his route sheet on the main clipboard we use for mowing all summer long in his truck. And every time it snows, I'm like, I got to order a clipboard. I'll just order one on Amazon and be cheap, get it in a few days, fine. Every time we have a storm, do I order the clipboard? No. No, why would I do that? Why? why not? That would make sense. Why would I do that? So, no, I don't do it. And then every time another storm's coming, I'm like, damn it, I never got a clipboard. So, here I am down in my little town with one street light that barely ever works. And I go to the Dollar General because there's a Dollar General everywhere. I firmly believe if you go into a field and you spin in circles three times and say Dollar General three times within six months, one will pop up there. So, no, they, they're all out. They don't have them. So I went in the Rite Aid that happens to be there and no, they don't have them either. So, no clipboard. And I'm not going all the way to the city just for a clipboard. I am supposed to go to the gym with Kelly later. So maybe I'll grab one then. I don't know. Uh, maybe, you know what, I'll look at Billy's location. I'll see where Billy is. And maybe he will, on his way home, he can go through. Because if he's at Natalie's house, that's past the city. So he would have to come through the city to get home. He can go and get a clipboard. That'll work. Well, let's do that. I'm going to go home and edit this video now because I've recorded enough today. And, uh, yeah, I'll, just, I'll do that. That's what I'm going to do. I'm, I'm good. Okay, bye.